Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and for today's video well actually I want to just quickly digress a second I've been playing a lot of open TTD and on one of my save files I'm currently in the year 2016 which was the future for when the developers made this game in the 90s and one of the futuristic aircraft you can get in this game in the year 2016 is this weird triple fuselage passenger jet and there's quite a lot of planes like this as you get towards the future in the game, you get loads of like triple fuselage aircraft. So clearly the game developers felt that this was going to be the future of rapid mass transit by air. So maybe they were onto something. That's what I'm gonna put to the test today. Is this actually a good design for a passenger aircraft or is it um, not? And it was just done because it looked kind of cool and futuristic when the, the game was made. By the way, OpenTTD, love it. It's free on Steam. It stands for Open uh, Transport Tycoon Deluxe. It's a brilliant game. I bought it like a week ago and now I've put in like 30 hours. It's, uh, it's basically ruining my relationship with my girlfriend is what it's doing. Anyway, here you can see I am constructing the aircraft here. And I thought I'd make it an SSTO because, of course, this is the Matt Lown YouTube channel. Why would it not be an SSTO? But it's predominantly made to transport crew. And I thought, you know, what could be the unique selling point of this aircraft to differentiate Laon Aerospace from your SpaceX's, your Blue Origins, your Virgin Galactics, etc, etc. And I thought, in these trying times, we're still on the tail end of a pandemic. If you want to have your know, tourism, tourists going to space, but then one of the tourists tests positive for COVID-19, they can't come on the plane anymore. But they can on this plane because each pod is socially isolated from each other. So the pilot can kind of go in the central uh, fuselage and any sort of actual NASA astronauts or whoever, scientists, payload specialists to do, you know, payload missions. And there's a cargo bay as well just in case you want to take some light cargo like a small satellite into orbit and then the side fuselages that can be where the passengers go so you can have like two parties um you know i don't know let's think of a classic rivalry right now say you know a politician wanted to buy a ticket but then you know a reasonable moral person also wanted to buy a ticket they're not going to get along with each other so politician can go on one side citizen can go on the other side or you know any other classic comedy uh, whimsical rivalry that might exist in the world of space flight. I don't know, maybe Jeff and Elon both want to go on a, on a flight, but, you know, they, they might not get along too well. This could be for them, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be going to space, and we're going to go into orbit. I should probably have clarified that, so that's another thing that differentiates us from, you know, New Shepard and Virgin Galactic. We're kind of on the same caliber as Falcon 9 Dragon, and in fact, we're actually better than that because we're fully reusable. Obviously, the Falcon 9... Uh, the first stage is recovered and the dragon capsule is recovered, but the second stage is not. So that's uh, one of the ways in which I'm going to once again dab on SpaceX. I really do make SpaceX look like a bunch of amateurs on this channel. Like, guys, it's clearly... Look, look, look at how I'm doing this. Just copy me. It's all easy. SSTOs are not difficult at all. Um, the Kerbal Space Program is a very realistic simulation of what the real world is. Y'all just need to, you know, look at, subscribe to Laon Aerospace. Just like you should, dear viewer. That's right, I finally remembered that we're supposed to... YouTube has shown that, like, if you ask people to like and subscribe, it actually does make a really tangible difference. So please, like and subscribe if this uh, amazing commentary has not done a good job of painting my channel in a positive light thus far. Okay. I probably, I probably should have talked about the flight, actually, just glancing at the screen, realizing I'm basically in space now. Uh, there wasn't really a lot to it, just uh, use the rapiers until, you know, I think it was about 240,000 meters above sea level, at which point I switched them over to closed cycle mode. Didn't have a lot of oxidizer because I've got those nuclear engines to do most of the work getting into orbit. And we're pretty much there, you know, apoapsis of 82 kilometers and periapsis of 68 kilometers. That's pretty much orbit. But we're going to create a maneuver node just to circularize. And I'm an idiot. I just created the maneuver node at periapsis for some reason. And so this is obviously going to lure us to be on a I guess we are technically on a suborbital trajectory anyway, but like take our apoapsis out of orbit as well. And I don't know how I didn't even notice. I was just obviously very tired when I was filming this video. <laughs> Luckily, like I say, periapsis height was basically in space anyway, so I could just put on maximum time warp using the mod uh, better time warp that lets you warp faster than times four in physics mode. So in this case, I could do tw times 20 physical time warp to get through the atmosphere nice and quickly. And then I sorted everything out 
plotted a proper maneuver node so that we could circularize. And as you can see, we've only got, you know, about 50 meters per second of delta V remaining. So it's not really enough to do anything meaningful, unfortunately, but really don't need to, you know, we're just going to orbit. And if I wanted to use this for rapid transit, just like the, uh, you know, the plane that I based this design on is, you know, the open TTD passenger plane, then we could do that. You know, going into a suborbital trajectory, blasting through space, and then, you know, descending down again, much like the Starship Earth to Earth concept, is, uh, you know, much faster than a conventional airliner. So, really, I think I've hit every objective possible. But I did notice on the map screen that the Skylab 2 Electric Boogaloo Space Station is still here. I made a video on Sky. I clicked the wrong one, sorry, I accidentally switched to my spaceport. <laughs> uh, I made a video on this a couple of weeks ago, and I deorbited it, and it exploded, and it was destroyed, as was intended. Uh, but here it is not. So I don't know what happened. I'm pretty sure I didn't load any random quick save, or maybe what I did... Oh, I've just... I Just now, as I'm saying this commentary, I just realized what happened. I think what happened was, for the thumbnail of that video, I didn't have any shots from the mission, so I just cheated it into orbit just so I could take some pictures for the thumbnail. That's right, sorry, the thumbnail did not show the mission, the space station was cheated there for the thumbnail. You got clickbaited, I'm very sorry. Um, but I thought, you know, let's just go, it's here, it's got lots of fuel, let's just uh, visit it in the tourism spacecraft. But of course, the tourism space plane has not got enough fuel. So, we're going to do one of the greatest maneuvers I've ever done in my career, and I'm going to dock the space station to the, like, we're going to fly the space station to the spacecraft, because the space station has more Delta V than the spacecraft. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I just, I couldn't be bothered to, like, change the orbit to encounter the spacecraft a little bit faster, so I just time warp for a bit until I get a nice close encounter without needing to adjust my orbit first, and then I'm just going to perform my, execute the burn, and get our separation, you know, nodes to be nice and close together. Not really. I mean, that was terrible. If you're if you're like struggling to rendezvous and you wanted to use this video as a tutorial, then that was terrible, wasn't it? I mean, I'd say if you want to learn how to dock, I always say just do Minmus missions, like do an Apollo-style Minmus mission, and yeah, maybe I should redo that video. I was about to say, oh, hey, I've done a video on that, and you can just watch that, but that was like five years ago that video, so it's probably been buried by the search algorithms by now, and it won't show up anymore. So maybe I should redo that video. But basically, I always stood by that if you want to practice rendezvous in a nice, easy, forgiving setting, just do an Apollo-style Minmus mission, in that you have a separate lander and you know a mothership like like the Apollo missions, right? There was the command module and there was the lander module, and you land on the surface of Minmus, and then you got to—you have to dock with the mothership in orbit. And I think Minmus is much more forgiving than Kerbin because it's got much lower gravity, so maneuver nodes and all that are much cheaper to execute in Minmus orbit. And you know, it's just easier to have more delta V than you need. I don't really know, but I always found—I just think it would be easy. I th that being said, I think I learned how to rendezvous in Kerbin orbit. I think I used the Scott Manley tutorial, which is also great. I don't know how I could possibly make a better tutorial than that, and, you know, just, just, um, don't really know. Yeah. <laughs> Moving along. As you can see, uh, the docking port of the space plane is on its back, and I didn't know, I didn't think there would be enough room for it to dock to the side, the, the radially mounted docking port here, because of the wings and all that, and it might destroy the solar panels. So I instead I moved the command module to the radial docking port, so I could put the space plane on the end of that orange fuel tank. And that orange fuel tank is a habitation module on that space station. In the video in which I, you know, built this space station, I was actually uh, imitating a NASA plan to convert spent SLS fuel tanks into habitation modules for a space station, and it was the Skylab 2. And it was, I, I really liked that video, so you should ch just check that out. Just check it out, you know? Just check it out. And yes, here I am docking very, very clumsily. This was quite a cumbersome spacecraft to maneuver. The uh, monopropeller thrusters are not the most powerful, and it's just a very big, clunky aircraft, basically. So it was a bit of a difficult, it was a bit of a chore to get the docking, basically. I have sped the footage up to four times faster than real time, so you can imagine how painstaking the process was for me. And I think I actually used a physical time warp a bit <laughs> when I was doing these maneuvers as well, just because everything was so slow with those, you know, monopropellant thrusters. But as you can see, we're closing in on the target now. I really should use the mod docking port alignment indicator, 
for the record, I cannot vouch if it's a good mod or not because I've never actually used it or seen it being used. But everyone always says, just use this mod. It makes docking really, really easy because one of the problems in Kerbal Space Program is it's really hard to tell if your docking ports are actually aligned. You kind of have to move the camera around to figure it out and it's not, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Hopefully it gets fixed for Kerbal Space Program 2. So maybe I should try that mod out, but I'm so far into my Kerbal career at this point that I'm just used to it. I'm a masochist at this point. I'm just like... Uh, it's fine. I kind of know what to do. And, you know, docking takes a little bit longer, makes the video longer, therefore I get more money, which is obviously the only reason I ever make Kerbal Space Program videos, everyone knows. So, um, yeah, it's a kind of a... that's basically why. And that was a joke, by the way. Don't take it too seriously. And that could really be said for most things on this channel, really. There's kind of like a, uh, a bit of a duality of Matt on this channel, right? Because on the one hand, you've got these Kerbal videos, which I just ramble and just... It, they're, they're, it's a very different tone to the other side of this channel, which is space news. It's very scripted, very factual. I like to think that it's a pretty good educational source. And then you've got these ones, these videos, in which I say nothing at all, and somehow it's now just over 11 minutes into a video. I barely even look at the screen when I'm doing these Kerbal commentaries. Unless I'm, like, very specifically doing a, a tutorial, then um, I don't do it. And as you can see... Uh, I didn't have much Delta V left in the space plane. I had enough to deorbit, but I'm like, I just want to deorbit like quickly and easily. So I just uh, yoinked some of the liquid fuel out of the space station's tanks, so I could just deorbit really, really quickly, get a nice fast descent. Because ultimately, we are entertaining tourists on this space plane, and uh, I thought, well, if we're gonna drop down really fast, we're gonna get some really high G forces. Might make it a bit more exciting, you know? It's like a roller coaster. So, and I've, I've activated the air breathing rapiers just in case I need them, but I, don't, I didn't actually need them in the end. I just was able to glide down to the runway nice and safely. How is this for a textbook descent? Eh? I'm sure this would work in the real world and wouldn't result in anything overheating and exploding. Although, for the record, I should probably add now that I am playing with 100% re-entry heating. As you can see, those fuel, those temperature gauges are just flashing up every now and then on the bottom left of the screen, but luckily... It didn't. At this point, I just thought, oh, I might try and get a nice thumbnail shot. How's that? Oh, that's a good shot. Maybe I'll use that. Don't know. Don't know what the thumbnail is. You guys can well, obviously know because you clicked on this video. But I don't know at this point in time because that's how time works, right? It's it's linear. Oh, maybe this could be a potential shot. Who knows? So, uh, I guess now we're coming down to the runway. So we can t now just reflect on... Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe exceeded the... Uh, <laughs> the 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 G forces a little bit, but luckily they all survived. So it was fine. Yes, was the um the artist who came up with the triple hull aircraft in Open TTD? Well, I guess just TTD, right? Um, were they onto something? Um, don't know really. I guess maybe it was very. If they had, if oop, <laughs> a little bit of a wiggle there on the runway. I mean, if they were designing it for the COVID nineteen pandemic which, you know, is a non, there is a non-zero chance, then yeah, great design. Otherwise, I think it just adds a bit to, oh, <laughs> definitely had enough runway just there to slow down. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's kind of a cool aesthetic, I guess. It made it a bit difficult to try and put, like, air intakes on the aircraft, and it adds a lot of unnecessary drag. So, uh, I don't know. Looks cool. I wouldn't, I don't know how real, really practical it, it is to have aircraft like that. And I'm not surprised that, we don't really have aircraft like that in real life, do we? Anyway, I've now run out of time to talk about the end screen, but thanks to all my Patreons and members, and that's the end of the video.